Thank you. Um, what I want to talk about today is a lucid transformation, but more importantly, to give it as a, a model system of how you actually implement change on the farm. It's all very well having agronomic results, but I find this diagram quite useful um, when I'm talking to people about how different parts of our research fit together. And so a lot of the stuff I do is with PhD students who have to publish, so they need to do on-station experiments, get very good data, but that has very low currency and relevance when you go and talk to a farmer. The farmer says, well, you did that on your experimental station, you didn't do it on my farm. And then if we look down, we've had a lot of stuff about models and simulations and on-farm trials, and they become useful. Um, people are initially starting to do, deal with models have a lot of trouble getting published because you've got to validate them, etc. And so the data integrity declines, but the usefulness in terms of farmers' currency and relevance increases. And so what I'm going to do is give you a little bit of data from here, but also give you a case study, and, and um, the case study is what actually brings about transformational change on farm. When I was a young fellow, I finished my PhD and I went to England and I met John Porter, who at that time was still based in England and then three months later he went to Denmark, but he was very interested in climate change and that was 20 years ago. So I finished my postdoc and went home and thought, well who are the most vulnerable farmers in New Zealand if climate change is going to occur? And they are the dry land and east coast farmers, they, were, they operate in this region here of very low rainfall. So my laboratory is actually that part of New Zealand and it's predicted to get dry. So the first thing I did was look at what their potential yield would be um, based on, on what we had in terms of resources. So here's a dry land, um, the example of a dry land pasture, here's one that we just add water to, here's one that we add water and nitrogen to and that's the example I used yesterday in dairy farming. But what I was most interested in was this one that we just added nitrogen to without the ability to add water. And so there's our 6.3 tonnes that some of you would have seen yesterday. But we got to 15.7 tonnes simply by adding nitrogen to the system. The key result was that these systems are nitrogen deficient, they are not water deficient. Well they are water deficient, but there's a large increase can be made if you can get water into the system. So they do look very dry in the middle of summer but water is used out of the crop by physics, evapotranspiration uses water. So your water is empty from the soil bucket at the same rate or pretty much the same rate, regardless of whether you produce 15 tonnes or 6.3 tonnes. The additional nitrogen here um, has actually not given us a whole lot more water because there wasn't much more available. But what it did do was make the water that was available used much more efficiently. So in our dry land pastures, we have a limited water supply. We know nitrogen makes plants grow. We know we have an animal that is going to lactate and so it's going to need feed during lactation. But we also know we've had a lot of environmental issues to deal with, so we need to minimise our impact on air, soil and water, be productive and profitable, and potentially more socially acceptable than the dairy systems I was talking about yesterday. And so my solution was an EDM dominant. How do we get more legumes into the system? I had a series of PhD students work on that. One of the key results we got was um, that, not surprisingly, lucine growth rate increases as you increase mean temperature in the spring. This is irrigated, so no limitation, it's got its own nitrogen. But in the autumn, quite a different response. So in the autumn, you have a lot of underground biomass. And so at the same temperature, you've got quite a different growth rate in the autumn than you do in the summer. And um, one of my students did a lot of digging and found that actually what was happening was the underground biomass was decreasing from about three tonnes to one and a half tonnes as the day length was getting longer and then would recharge under the ground going into the autumn. What that meant was we totally changed the grazing systems for alfalfa. We no longer use 10% flowering. We actually start grazing loose when it's about five centimetres tall, maybe eight centimetres tall. And we graze it with ewes and lambs and we put some fibre out and some salt because it's a naturophobe and we ensure that they are um, happy and we might mix graze and we might mow some strips there to ensure that we don't have very lush uh, lucerne or alfalfa in the spring. And we get a conversion efficiency of about 131 grams 
um, 43 kilo consumed. So it takes us about seven kilos of dry matter to produce one kilo of meat. There isn't a more efficient system of converting uh, plant protein into animal protein. And one of our farmers has um, been so successful that he's um, written a book, sold 10,000 copies, and um, believe it or not, he's got Scottish farmers to pay him an all expenses paid business class trip this year to Scotland to travel around and explain his situation. It took until the droughts of this year for them to actually agree to pay for him to come. One of the things he told us was um, it was very difficult making the change, and so my job was to spend a lot of time as an extension agent. What you find in any farming system is that a farmer knows his system, and they have actually optimised it. And the small changes that occur that you're unlikely to be able to do are incremental, change the cultivar, change the fertiliser regime. That's not going to change very much for them because they actually know their system pretty well. What happens is we're trying to implement a new technology, whatever it may be, and inevitably there is a negative response to that implementation. And this wouldn't matter if I was talking about um, you having to learn a new computer package or um, a farmer having to introduce a new, there's going to be a negative input initially. And so that negative output is the bit that stops farmers making decisions and doing things. They are scared of the fact that they already know their system, how do I change it? And so as they start to make a change, there is a risk of reversion that they'll go back to the old system that they had. But what we're trying to get here is transformational change. We want a loose end grazing system to work. So my job as an agronomist, crop physiologist, was to ensure that I provided all of the solutions to those farmers. And reduce that time to optimisation so that the risk of reversion was minimised. Here's my case study, a second case study. This is a 400 millimetre rainfall environment. It's a high country farm, Marino station in the high country. Um, their old system set stopped for much of the year, constantly chasing grass. 100 days of supplementary feed, so animals are not indoors, but 100 days of supplementary feed, meaning silage or hay having to be made for 100 days. And their peak feed demand and supply misaligned. So you can see a large increase in um, feed supply, but that gets cut and carried to feed animals through the winter. So the lucerne actually gave them more feed, not a lot, but it gave them more feed, so we're dealing here with moving from their unimproved to potentially 12 and, and, and 10 tonnes of dry matter, so more feed. What the farmer did was recognise the areas of his farm that had deep soils. So we encouraged them to leave the, the um, areas that weren't so good and they can provide ecosystem services. In this case, they provide shelter for lambing, um, and the animals are then eating and grazing into areas of pure lucerne, and they can go and get some roughage if they want to. The other thing he did that was very clever was he married well. His um, wife is an agricultural science graduate, so she was very happy to collect data. And so we have a lot of data. One of the key performance indicators on a farm is how many kilos of lamb you actually can produce. To get that, you need to know the number of lambs, or the, the number of lambs and their weaning weight. A very good indicator of how the farm is performing. And there's a number of other things that go into making that up. So we've got data that shows that this is the lambs weaned off this property. In 2008, um, the farmer saw the example from the previous farm. And you can see almost these skips that have occurred in that transformational change. And in 2017, we now have, uh, if my numbers are correct, about 140 tonnes of lamb weaned compared with about 90 tonnes. So we have a 50% increase in the lamb produced off that property. If you multiply that by $5 a kilo, or, or let's say 3 euros a kilo, you get the, the implication of that from a financial perspective. It doesn't happen through increasing the stocking rate. It increases through stocking performance. So here's the number of ewes baited, and you can see it didn't really change initially. Not much change in the number of ewes or the, the productive stock you have on the farm. What happened later was he understood the system a bit more, so he could um, then implement more numbers. But what really happened was the mixed age ewes, so this is mixed age and tutus, so it's a, a young lambs, their lambing percentage increased. The data isn't quite the same because we didn't have all the numbers, but in 2008 he was lambing with his, his, his flock at about 108%, which is very good for merinos, but now 
is leveling at 135 per cent. And as young stock are doing the same from you know 85 per cent to now 120 per cent of these very young animals. And he decreased the number of lambs that died. So this is the wastage. And you can see um, the green line here from the mixed age is about 20%. This is a high country. This is lambs exposed to very cold conditions and they can die uh, very easily. But better feed with a protein source in the last two weeks. I'm, I'm slightly sexist here for any of the women in the audience. As you've got, if you're given birth, you'll know that as you've got to into your late pregnancy, you ate lots of small meals rather than a big meal. It's the same with animals. They can only eat a small meal if they're carrying twins, and that must be very good quality. So we have a legume here providing that very good quality, high protein required in the last two weeks of pregnancy. But interestingly, that last two weeks also lays down the brown fat for the lamb that's being born. And the brown fat is what enables that animal to regulate its temperature so when it is born it can then survive. If it's into cold conditions, it can thermoregulate. So very important for lamb survival that you have that protein in the last part of the system. And so what we've got is a traditional system, then a, a jump from improving the new condition score, then increasing the survival as we started to lamb onto the elusive, and then the use and an increase in the number of ewes that we had. So we've seen the same thing. What happens in all our farm systems is we actually get a limitation to how much growth you can get out of the lambs in that pre-weaning period when they are on mum. This particular breed can do about 300 grams um, per head per day, or close to 400, sorry, as a maximum, when they're on very high quality feed. And it actually stays relatively constant. The difference is the ewe weight. A ewe will lose weight to try and maintain that growth rate for the lamb. And so what she's doing here is we're actually not compromising the ewe by giving her good quality feed, so she's in better condition the whole time through the system. So in this transformation of change, we've changed to loose end grazing, we've increased the heat performance of the ewes, increased the dry matter growth with the loose end because it's no longer nitrogen deficient. We don't have to make anywhere near as much winter feed, our weed lands are sold at heavier weights and we now have more use in the system. The farmer's answer was, we listened to advice and acted on it. Thank you.